we should be live now. Awesome. Uh, so thanks everyone to, for coming to another uh, Node.js community committee meeting. Um, we'll get started today. We are gonna have a private session um, uh, toward the end. Um, I'm gonna let Tracy Hines time box that because I don't know how much time we'll need on that, um, but we should be good to go with that. So just to give you a heads up, this uh, would be public session will end a little bit early uh, just so we can get an update. Um, other than that, let's get started. Uh, does anyone have initiative updates? Do you want me to give the update for um, JSI or? Uh, we let's leave that as the, uh, just a non, uh, just a normal issue agenda item. Okay. Cool, awesome. Cool. Um, I can speak for mentorship. Cool. So uh, we're almost done with the first round of mentorship. Uh, we have some cool projects that people worked on. Um, I should be preparing some slides to share with you um, about the things that happened in the beta round. And hopefully um, also soon we'll start like recruiting for the next round and hoping we'll see more of you join us. Awesome. Uh, Dan said he had a user feedback check-in. Yeah, uh, so next week we're gonna do kind of the first dry run of um, what we're, we're pivoting to with uh, our general user feedback to um, a online meetup style thing, uh, registered on meetup. Uh, let's see, is that a thing? Um, the session meetup is complaining, I think, with their uh, new relationship with WeWork. Um, everything has to be in a location now uh, or tied to a physical location somewhere. Um, and by the way, if you need a physical location, come to WeWork. Um, uh, anyway, uh, uh, SF Node is uh, is going to be joining as kind of a broadcast partner for the, the online meetup. Um, so I might sort of you know shift that messaging to you know have some of the um, local groups that are going to be sharing this. Uh, this is going to uh, our dry run is going to be on um, the twelfth at uh, five p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so you know lining that up with um after work on eastern time right when you said um dry run our first one first one yeah i mean it'll, yeah, okay. it'll be the you know first one uh it'll be the first sort of trial of yep. uh an online Pilot. model using the webinar i just wanted uh, to make sure i didn't need to be ready in advance because i'd looked i'd noticed that i'm on the agenda i just wanted to see oh God, if I am I was... on the agenda <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, okay. So, um, you know, I, I, I reach for um, existing talks and uh, um, Michael Dawson has the overview of uh, the community that I'd love uh, you to share, Michael, if you're available. Yep. And then uh, uh, Rich Trott has, um, you know, a, 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 a fun little talk uh, sort of uh, uh Give him feedback on Dnode um, and uh, how that applies to the Node.js project. So that, that should be a good draw. Okay. Cool. Um, also, I know Tracy Heinz just joined us. Um, I did want to say, Tracy, that I uh, let everyone know that we're going to cut off a bit early for a private session. Uh, how much time do you want to have for that? Sorry, I didn't mean to throw you on, uh, on the spot. Cool. Um, I'll, Sorry, I'll you... um, uh, I would say 10 minutes at the cool. most, unless there's going to be like, yeah, let's say 15 for questions just in case. Cool. Sounds good. Um, cool. Any other initiative updates people want to share? Cool. Um, so two things. Um, Quicker one, um, as I was reviewing, as I was reviewing for my talk that includes a lot of community committee context, um, I uh, realized that we only had one good first issue. So I went through and um, labeled a few more that I, I thought fit that description. Um, I also added a, and this is directly in the in the community committee repo. 
Um, I also added a mentor available uh, label just because there's things that I'm happy to help people with if they want to use it as a place to get started um, in contributing. Uh, and I just added it to the issues that I'm available for. If other people want to do that or help out mentoring people in those um, those specific issues, I'd be happy to help uh, like as a good first issue, um, mentor people for the good first issues. Um, I just did that so it would be a little bit more obvious uh, which ones are like directly uh, easily accessible uh, for people. Um, on top of that, uh, we do have the community committee chair election, uh, chairperson election happening. Uh, so I know Tracy kicked off the, the election time thread. Uh, it looks like it's the uh, question Q and A period ends on Sunday, September 9th. Um, so please get in uh, questions and comments before then. And for um, uh, nominate self nominated individuals, uh, please do go ahead and answer those. And also, uh, there's a space for you to add your own kind of can candidate statement. Uh, so please go ahead and either share that with Tracy or edit the post. I'm not sure which Tracy would prefer. Um, but yeah, uh, please go ahead and, you know, ask questions uh, of the candidates, including like candidates, feel free to ask questions of the other candidates um, and kind of try to get to know the people a little bit more than you already do. Um, awesome. Tracy, anything else you wanted to add to that? Nope, that sounds good. The, uh, the ballots go out tomorrow, um, probably my time, and I'm in Tel Aviv right now, so that'll be, they'll be in your inbox before you wake up, very likely. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that there was some time for Q&A um, and discussion before we shout out the ballots, because some people will vote as soon as they get it. Um, so, yeah. What, one quick question. And maybe it's in some of the stuff you sent and I didn't read it carefully enough, but given that there's, I think it's like five candidates, what's the, what's the process like in terms of say, you know, you, if you vote for one person, but then is it just whoever gets the most votes or is it that you get to vote for people in order of preference or Just wondering, like when it's two, there's no there's no complication. But when there's more, there's different models that could be used. So I was just curious. That's a good so question. So it doesn't look like that's. Guessing, yeah. I was gonna say it doesn't Go look ahead. like that's def explicitly defined in our governance. Um, yep. My assumption would be the person with the most, the, the largest percentage or the most votes, which are effectively the same thing. Um, there could be a, I that that was my assumption. Um, like another way would be you have a runoff, right? Like the, you know, the primaries and then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an excellent question because I was going to use, you know, the format that we've used prior for elections, but with this many candidates, I know, and um, so few uh, voters, uh, that could be a very <laughs> interesting problem. <laughs> yeah, um, everybody's a candidate. Yeah, right. Like, you know, or half of ComCom -com is candidates, you know, sort of not not half, mm. actually, but all those. Um, and you, you could easily end up with, you know, somebody with 30% winning, right? Or 20% or. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this choice. is a problem, right? Yeah. Ranked choice voting works well for a uh, larger number of candidates. Uh, yeah. And we should consider that as an option since. Uh, the biggest complaint against ranked choice voting is that uh, people don't really grok it, but I think we can. Yeah, it can be a little more confusing. This group. Yeah. I yeah. Think this um, this, cool uh, the, L the LF uses CIBS, which I think offers that as one of the options. Like you actually have to choose which type of uh, voting you do. And I, I think I could do that ranking. I think I accidentally did it for one of our elections or votes. I don't want to say it was an election for people, but it was a vote on something and I'd actually t accidentally did this by preference. So um, I could look into that before we send it out tomorrow. Clearly understanding that y'all are recommending the, the preferential or the, the, the rate preference. 
Yes, anybody object to that? No objections. No. Uh, doesn't seem like there's an objection. Cool. But also I'm wondering if we should probably codify this in some way moving forward. Um, not that we want to be making more rules, but I think I'd feel more comfortable if we had this defined for whoever ends up having to run an election. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I think it would make sense. Cause I mean, I, I, I just remembered cause we had a similar question on the TSC election side and it didn't end up being an issue cause we only had two people, but uh, yeah, writing it down what, what it is in both cases would make sense. Would that go in governance or, com or, or charter? I assume governance, that's the one that doesn't have to be approved by the board? Yes, I highly recommend that yep. so that we can okay. be flexible in changing it if we don't like the, you know, the, yep. the yep. pattern. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't work I, out. I, was just, I wasn't sure which one was the appropriate one. Cool. Uh, I will do that. Um, I have that open now to do. So uh, I will take care of that. Or I'll submit a PR for it. Um, cool. With that, last check, are there any other initiative updates that people want to share? Cool. Um, we can get on to the agenda items now. I realize I just used my agenda tab to open that file. Uh, da, 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 give me one sec. Okay. Uh, first then on the agenda is JS Interactive and no community quarter updates. Cool. So yeah, um, I'll give a quick update on what's been happening. So thank you for different ComCom and TSC folks who joined us for laying out the schedule. Shockingly, we were able to lay out the entire community corner schedule in an hour. I was surprised. <laughs> but we have all the submissions. Um, the schedule is fully laid out. So we'll be um, publishing that very soon, probably uh, early next week. Uh, we will have open sessions for uh, lunchtime if anybody wants to just come and talk about what you want to talk about. So that's exciting. Um, there is an issue in the summit repo uh, that you can look and you can look at the Excel file and you can look at the tentative agenda as well. So feel free to look at that and um, ask any questions you have. Collaborator Summit, Dan Manil and, and Mateo and I have all been working on that. Um, Mateo shared out an agenda that's almost finalized with everyone else. So we'll be meeting after that for this. Member companies as well are still welcome to send swag. So if you are a member company and you want to send swag to give to people during the Collaborator Summit, uh, please email me, ladylead at nojs.org. And... Um, Manil, did you have any comment on that? Collapse summit or anything? Mm. I just thought you pop up, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything to add at this point. Um, this You mentioned the schedule and the swag and everything, and everything will okay. be delivered here. So, yeah, no, that's all good. Cool. And uh, in addition to that, uh, Zibby's been working on the t shirt contest for Node Plus JS Interactive. So, Zibby, I don't know if you wanted to share that. Yeah, happy, I'm happy to share. So I have the voting ending today. And so far, I know some people on this poll will be upset, but option number one is winning. <laughs> uh, so, so once we have that finished, uh, whichever one kind of wins, we'll go through with that. I'll also ask to see if we might be able to do option three, because I know it's uh, a close. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what's winning. Um, there, uh, the other update that I had beyond the t-shirt stuff is, um, I sent out an email yesterday to ComCom email alias. Um, I'm pulling together kind of like news and blogs and just momentum for the conference. Um, and I'd love to hear from this group. If you have any kind of big wins this year from the community, from the different working groups you're working on, or if there's like action items that need to to happen, you'd like more collaborators for different things, um, you know, send them my way. I'm kind of get, gathering the puzzles, if you will, right now, and then I'll kind of piece them together so we can have some nice momentum going into the conference and at the conference around uh, different wins from the community or uh, things you're working on. So send them my way. 
actually another thing as as Ivy was asking for volunteers who think I remember that uh, very soon, just to give everyone a heads up, we will be sending out uh, a Google form for volunteers for office hours for the community corner. So uh, just a heads up. And then, you know, if you can come and just like hang out for a few hours, that would be really great. Um, addition to that, uh, Joy is going to sort of be leading the it's going to kind of be like a hack area type thing, kind of open if you want to come work on some uh, node core projects or anything like that. Uh, there should be folks kind of hanging out and, and and doing that throughout the conference. So, and then Greg, uh, I don't know if you had any update additional updates on your side. Hey, sorry, I was just trying to find the mute button. Um, uh, no, I actually don't think I do have any updates. Um, I'm just trying to think and see if I'm forgetting anything. Uh, but I don't think I am. I think you covered it really well. Um, I'm really psyched about the uh, the community corner and the agenda that's come together and just, you know, everything that's going to be happening there. Um, I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Um, nope, I don't think I have anything. Anybody got any questions for me? Okay. And then just a reminder, I know I sent this out to the ComCom -com list uh, prior, but if you have not registered for Collaborator Summit, please do. Uh, we currently have a little over 200 registered on Friday, and then we have about 70 registered on Saturday. So um, again, Where we really- can we do that? Uh, to register? Mm -hmm. So if you, if you have, purchased a ticket through the JS Interactive web, uh, sorry, Node plus JS Interactive, then it, there should have been a checkbox to say, hey, I'm going to Collaborator Summit as well. Um, and if not, and if you're planning on just attending the Collaborator Summit, I, I sent it in an email, but it's also listed on that issue um, for instruction. So if you, for some reason, can't find those, again, you can just email me, ladyleet at nojs.org, and I'm super happy to help troubleshoot. I, I'm planning to come with work, um, uh, but I'm waiting to hear back on some details. Should I um, just register uh, separately for Collapse on it? I mean, I'm planning to go, so. You're plan are you planning on going to the, the conference the whole, as well? The whole thing, yeah. I would wait till you buy your ticket and then just click that, ch check okay. the box there. Yeah. And uh, yeah. You can pencil me in at least. Okay, cool. Awesome. Great. Thanks. Yeah, I think both Joe and I are going to have like a, a sponsor ticket. I, I think that's might have been what he was getting at. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Um, awesome. So, I think with that we can move on unless anyone else has anything they'd like to say on JS Interactive or sorry, Node Plus JS Interactive or um, uh, the Community Corner. Uh, I just had a question about the the signups for the events after the conference. Um, so that's still open for registration. You mean the Collaborator Summit or the Code and Learn? I believe Code and Learn is maxed, right, Tracy? Um, I don't, I, we, we need to double check on Code and Learn whether that's maxed. I know Collaborator Summit is not maxed out, but it might be soon. Uh, we're gonna try to cap it at 300. So, so maybe you probably know better about Code and Learn. Yeah, so yeah, so Code and Learn, I think last time we spoke, which was about a month ago, because um, we had talked with uh, Rick and the, the usual folks that are running that. And we had like 275 people already registered a month ago for Code and Learn. And given how many mentors we can have, um, we were told like, hey, this is all we can you know, fit because we can only hold like 310 people in the um, the place where we're going to have it slash like we need enough mentors with folks to match and make sure that people feel comfortable and confident with that. So I believe Code and Learn is maxed out um, in terms of the amount of folks that we are having as um, 
mentees, if you will. I think there still is something happening with mentors. Um, I would ask Rich about that because he's kind of more um, close to it. Um, but with the Collapse Summit, I, I think we have plenty of space for that. Um, it's just the node, yeah, the COVID yeah. learn where we were kind of like, eeks, we have a lot of people already registered for this, which is great, but you just want right. to make yeah, it. Yeah, I was on that thread. That's why I was just making sure that that side had been covered because I was the one that sent up the SOS on the, <laughs> on the, the number, um, which is a great number, but yeah, it's really hard to support on the mentor side, so... Well, cool. I mean, okay. the folks here should be more on the mentor side, right? In yeah, so, sure, but the, well, we're, that's we're also collaborators and we're, we're, we're there to help out. Right, right. But it's also um, depending on what Code and Learn is aiming for this year. Uh, Code and Learn historically has been very focused on Node Core. So um, when it comes to mentoring, we also have to be careful that we can support people properly in that regard or over sure. whatever areas of the repos, because we also have to provide tasks. Um, so it's not just about like our ability to help as mentors, but also to provide tasks for them to uh, succeed. Cool. And for what it's worth, Tracy did create an issue a while ago uh, to see if there were issues or that could be used for tasks in the ComCom or its initiatives. Um, that issue is still open. I think I might have just pulled it up to the top by commenting in it yesterday or this morning. Uh, well, this morning for me. Um, so if there are uh, issues that you think could be used for Code and Learn, um, I know a few of you at least were there last year, even before you were in the ComCom. Um, please feel free to go ahead and you know add them to that issue or jump in that issue to discuss that possibility because that would be a beneficial thing I think for the, the community committee yeah um, do they have a um do we have a code and learn label I don't think so no but I can I can go at it um and that said I don't know if we'd I don't know if there would be community commission committee ones that would be better or if it would be initiative issues um or do you mean in the org or just in the community committee repo sorry I just know that like it can be tough if people want to help in tagging um, if we don't have the label gotcha. created uh, in the various repos. Yeah. I can go through and add that if people, if that's uh, part of that flow, um, I'm happy to go through and add that to each of the can repos. I, why don't you go ahead and add that to the community committee and then uh, initiatives and yep, uh, groups can, can go in and you know, pile onto that and yep. you know, bring awareness in, into that sort of central location? Well, theoretically, you can also, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, we'll tag it in our own uh, repos, yeah. but you know, let's let's uh, have a central thread where we can all you know drop things in. Yeah. Uh, well, the issue will be, but the label is what I was talking about. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So the issue is there. I also created the label in the ComCom repo. Um, I don't think I should tag that issue as code and learn because then it would be pulled as an issue to be addressed. Um, and they wouldn't need addressing, I don't think, uh, by code and learn mentees. Um, so. All good. Cool. Um, on, on the collab summit, uh, if you're happen to be a speaker, I was already signed up. So I don't know if I did good things earlier. Um, but, uh, if you happen to be signed in already, you may already be signed up for uh, collab summit. Cool. Anything else people want to say on JSI or uh, Node Community Corner? Cool. Um, let me reopen the agenda. Uh, okay, so next issue is, I'm going to skip the next one because it's a closed issue. Um, or, it, well, it's a past meeting. Uh, it's the individual sub membership subgroup meeting, I guess. Both Do we want to are... give an update on that? Um, both of those are old, I think. Well, I, the, 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 the other one was notification to come to the, uh, the meeting on the 4th. Um, and the next issue, I, I removed the label. So we didn't need cool. to go into that because we already covered that last time. Um, so uh, in terms of individual membership, um, 
you know, we, we met again. Um, we have uh, an internal document that uh, are we, uh, we, we, we scrubbed anything that was, uh, you know, talking about uh, anything sensitive. So uh, we, we could share that, right? Did we, did we publish that anywhere, Tierney? Did you drop uh, that? In the which, which one? There is multiple the, documents. The document uh, in individual membership that we began tracking as uh, the go forward document. You, I, I don't know if you dropped that into the issue. I don't think I dropped it in the issue. No. Uh, okay. Let me let me double check real quick. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, we did scrub that. So yeah, we can um, we can share that. So we're we're tracking to uh, uh, the individual uh, membership subgroup is meeting every two weeks on Mondays. Uh, if you uh, don't have that on your calendar and would like to join us, uh, I think we're 11 a.m. Pacific. 2 p.m. Eastern on Mondays, uh, every other Monday. So we'll be back uh, in two weeks. Uh, uh, that would be the um, the 17th. September 17th will be the next session. Uh, by the end of uh, October, we have a deadline to uh, deliver a recommendation or to align around a recommendation to the uh, strategic um Mm, leadership subcommittee, whatever the heck it's called these days. Uh, 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 and uh, so we're, we're working on that. And, um, you know, uh, lots to sort of figure out uh, with, with everything that's going on. Uh, and uh, we definitely need uh, more inputs, especially uh, anyone with strong opinions. So uh, I hope you'll join us and, uh, you know, help uh, make that um make that uh, a success. Tierney, do you, like, I, I think the most compelling um, direction that we have is the um, uh, GitHub style uh, process. Have you shared that in this forum? Uh, I, I, I think that would be the, the only I, context that I'd love to get in this forum. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, I'm happy to share it again though. So yeah, one perfect. of the things that, uh, I've said this a bunch, uh, so I, I, it's weird repeating. Uh, one of the things that I was super passionate about when I was in school was the GitHub Student Developer Pack, which is a program by GitHub for students. So anyone with a .edu email address um, realistically can get it, um, but you have to apply. And basically they give you access to this bundle of free resources um, that includes like a year, uh, I think two years of free GitHub membership um, and a bunch of other things. It's part of the GitHub education program. Um, and effectively what it is, is a way for, to distribute uh, a bunch of development resources easily uh, to people who might not be able to access it normally. Uh, so I just linked the example in the chat, um, but I think that this model could very much be um, useful, reused or composted for us in terms of, um, uh, in terms of individual membership, specifically uh, instead of students, it being individual members. And instead of, um, I'm not sure how they acquire the different assets and resources they give to students, but instead of it being however they do it, um, it being directly from member companies. So this would kind of hopefully check off a few boxes in terms of um, one, providing a direct uh, benefit to member companies and kind of an incentive to help out the community more. Um, to a way for community members who are engaging in the individual membership program to actually get some direct value out of it. Um, and three, a way for us to kind of um, continue, like those two things are both nice, um, but it's also a way, a benefit to a kind of good first benefit to start driving uh, membership. Yeah, um, I, I really love this. Here. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I've, uh, some of the discussion we had um, was around another thing that we've discussed was uh, a humble bundle pricing model um, where it's basically self-selection. Um, I personally think like a dollar is a good low end, but we did have some discussion in the last meeting um, around like what that minimum threshold should be. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all still TBD. Although I think we've had general consensus around the humble bundle model, humble bundle model just not what the lowest criteria or lowest price is. Um, and then there's even some suggestions around um, enabling companies to provide different things at different like 
similar to how humble humble bundle does it like if you do one dollar you get this set of things if you do ten dollars you get this additional set of things if you do thirty dollars you get this entire set of things um the that would I, enable that, us to cover cost if like we had a t-shirt in there that you know we had actual costs yeah and yeah and we also are being cognizant of like uh the world and this being a uh, a global thing that we'd ideally like to make uh as accessible as possible while also being a minimal cost to, to the project um if it is a cost at all so um yeah that's that's what we were kind of aiming at um i think that about covers it uh from the discussion around that um you know and part of the context that i came with uh, i will say is like a lot of the companies that are currently members, um, I consistently see giving out free credits or resources or XYZ digital product, whatever their thing is at conferences already that they're engaging with um, at a you know monetary level, not too dissimilar to what they're doing for the foundation um, currently. So I don't, and also working in a marketing org, I kind of understand that that's a, a, it typically has been a uh benefit to a lot of other marketing orgs um so you know that it, it seems like a good incentive uh to kind of help drive this a bit more and also like compute time is a really for node i think is a very good um asset to be kind of sharing um especially in the different clouds could also help us entice um more clouds uh, or cloud if not naming names but more cloud single cloud uh, to <laughs> um come participate so uh yeah right um, so, um to so, i have a question yep. so before we go um, into the question okay. uh you know I, I i just like to point out so you know that is you know a forming uh you know really uh sub substantial proposal for uh you know the substance of individual membership and i want to highlight that um you know that is not balanced uh, yet with a strong proposal for uh, individual membership director representation. So, it, you know, like that, that, that's really coming together. Um, and we do have this timeline. So if you're passionate about getting that uh, representation, uh, you know, we really need to, to, to either tease out that model or, you know, the likelihood is that that, that representation um, is probably going to go away. Sorry, Tracy. So, yeah, no, no, that's fine. That's good to know. Um... So taking a step back from both of these things, because I know that, that, of course, this is the focus of that work. Um, is there any planning around getting, like actually serving people who are engaged in the community and the wider ecosystem to figure out what they want out of this potential program and a director? Great question. That is the together. biggest <laughs> number one thing we've been asked for is like to take a step back from, you know, we, we sort of threw spaghetti at the wall with this program over the last couple of years. And we've had very little data to back up any decision making moving forward, which is a hypothesis of why it has not been as successful as we'd like. Um, and so a big ask for this is that any proposal that we have that we put forward to the board and the subcommittee uh, is one that is backed by data. Sure. So, um, you know, upside, uh, you know, having a relatively frictionless uh, membership gives us um, a, you know, potential for big membership numbers that are much realer than our current uh, MPM uh, installs based um, you know, participation number. Uh, so like I said, like the, the identity portion of individual membership is coming together and that, you know, is an addressable constituency. Uh, great. Um, we don't really have a strong, uh, hypothesis on, uh, how that relates to representation. I, and I would characterize your, uh, assertion, Tracy, mostly in, um, you know, if we, uh, have a, you know, a representation, it needs to represent the constituency. And right now uh, we don't have a good premise uh, for, uh, you know, a representative there. But I, I right, see, yeah. uh, is, is what you're asking about more specifically, more around a little bit of user research around what right. the consumers of this would actually want. 
um, what features they'd like from individual membership, what they'd like to see in the program and what they expect about representation? Yeah, I mean, I, yes, and yeah. also, yes, identifying a constituency that makes sense and then what that constituency would like to see. So this may be a good opportunity for individual membership and user feedback to collaborate on this since we basically want uh, user research on what people expect from a program like this. So yeah, a special session, that might be helpful. The thing that pops into mind though, is that there's a fairly limited amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm wondering if we should take the ideas, like basically brainstorm the ideas of what we think could be valuable and then do a survey, like a broadcast a survey to see if those resonate with people. And and because I'm thinking in the timeline, that may be the best kind of feedback we could get. So for what it's worth, the timeline is specifically on the individual director seat and not individual membership. Um, that is an important distinction to make. I The, the two are tied, um, but we also don't need to rush individual membership for that timeline. Um, I, I do just want to make sure that's a noted thing. Yeah, and well, I would say too that just from a, a sort of an urgency perspective, we, um, I know because I, I helped set that deadline. So we set the deadline for October last year um, because we wanted to make sure there would be plenty of time before the next election. So mm -hmm. that election would occur in January. Um, so that does give us time, but that was with my uh, uh, experience in understanding how long it takes for these types of changes to take place. So I would still say, like, we, we do need to, to hurry as much as possible while also taking care. But I will also say that, like, uh, uh, in order for, your, for this proposal to succeed, there has to be data to back it. And for us to, I think it will weaken the proof of that data if we start from a here's things we think that people would want, let's survey on it, versus trying to do a little more work on who the constituency is and then surveying them on that. Because you're sort of leading questions um, and I don't wanna get us back in the same boat that we've been in, which is we made assumptions about what people want um, and they're answering questions to that. So we're just working off of that. Do we have, does this, does this committee uh, and the the initiative have access to current and past membership data? Nope. Um, can uh, we, get we can that? get that. And okay. I also have it in my head because I've seen okay. it. Um, yes. awesome. I've seen it all until, you know, th this past six months. Um, yeah. So I would be able to tell you that in a session, we can request um, some form of it from IT as well. Again, that's protected um, for good reason. Mm -hmm. um, but we can try and glean information from that as well. Um, or if we need to for privacy's sake, um, uh, we can scrub uh, the information necessary before it's shared with the user feedback group in order for us to um, you awesome. know, move forward with that. Even if we have to go through a, an in-between uh, or go-between to, to message those folks, like crafting, uh, crafting a survey, probably separate surveys for current members and uh, past members, I uh, trying to get at some core reasons why and what they want and what they were missing. Oh yeah. Like yeah. Missing. No, mm -hmm. that, that, I mean, that is, that is an appropriate totally, use of the email yeah. list. Yes. That's totally yeah, fine. That's not yeah. an abuse of the list. Yeah. Cool. So we have a few foundation members on the call, uh, or foundation employees or Linux foundation employees, uh, that work on the node foundation. Um, would this be something we can codify as an ask now Tracy and then ask, uh, begin to that process or, is that something we need to wait for another meet, a different meeting for like a board meeting or something? Which Tracy are you asking? You, sorry. <laughs> sorry, no, you're fine. I just wanted to make sure because she's yeah, an employee. Yeah. So, um, yeah. uh, no, I don't think we need to ask for a board meeting. This is, they, mm -hmm. I would assume that it would be expected that we are doing our job as part of you know, the research around the individual membership program if we survey the prior members of the individual membership program. But we just have to, I would say, uh, Tracy Lee will probably, or someone like Zibby 
will have to help assist us potentially in uh, like they might be able to email everyone for us. Uh, it's possible that uh, they, uh, the foundation would not want to share that email list with our group overall, which again, for privacy concerns, I am okay with. Um, we would want to work with them to make sure we can provide the questions and then she can send out the, the email. And we have a MailChimp account just sitting around, so we'd be able to send it to them as well. Awesome. Hey, this is a beat. Yeah, that's what Tracy said. So we can't share the names of people with you because that can go against a lot of our privacy restrictions that we have, but we're happy to send emails on your behalf. So if you let us know what you want to send out, timeline, that sort of thing, if you need to create two emails, we can send it out to the list and provide you with the feedback back, oh. which would be anomalized. Oh, and also we have a SurveyMonkey account. Sorry. So that would also be like we could create the survey there and then yeah, they can send it out. Adam's created um, an issue. I, uh, I threw up an issue uh, and I've tagged it as both individual membership and user feedback because there's a good amount of crossover there. Uh, so let's, we can help, we can start crafting the survey. Uh, the both, I think that should be two different surveys. We, should, we can start crafting that and what we want to discover in there. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Dawson, uh, just to your point as well, I, I want to, and, and Tierney as well, mm -hmm. the benefits that y'all have been talking about already, I don't think it's a bad thing to continue to work on that while we get this data. Um, and then you can, you know, adjust for it as the data comes in. Because I think like working in tandem on these things is probably a good idea given the amount of time that we do have. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, I wonder if you, if you ask a, just a blank question of, you know, what do you want? It's sometimes hard to get input, but. Uh... Yeah, it, you, you have to give people some starting, starting base, baseline uh, to really get in genuine engagement and actionable engagement. Um, and so for what it's worth, we do have quite a bit of suggestions um, in that document. Uh, that I shared. Um, I'll share it again real quick. Um, but we can probably base a lot of the survey uh, off of what's in that um, while still trying to make sure it's objective and like we're not trying to push our ideas on the people um, and give them that as like, how would you like this idea to be manifested? It's more of, is this idea reasonable? And then if let's like this idea. Also in the in the process of this, let's let's be very clear about defining what it is we're trying to discover. Yep. Like it'd be nice to have a snapshot right now of uh, current happiness with individual membership and NPS score for individual membership. Uh, and I don't know if this survey is necessarily about uh, would you find this specific benefit uh, you know helpful? Because the answer will probably almost always be yes. Like you're giving me something for free, let's do it. But in, instead, what uh, like driving towards what you expect the value to be of individual membership versus here, do you want this for free <laughs> uh, um, or want this in return? Uh, so I'm going to tie box us on this. Uh, yeah, yeah, we we can have a couple issues discussion. and we have we're at yeah, uh, yeah we're have we're at the, the point where we said we'd stop. Um, uh, moderation team recertification. Um, Tracy, do you think we can do this as like a vote around in the meeting or in a public meet or private meeting? Um, or do we need to actually send out a vote, uh, like a, a voting form thing um, for, for it? Yeah, that's a good Tracy. point. I don't know. I mean, I would assume that we need to send it out as a ballot email for each. I don't know, because this is tough in that. We don't do bat. We don't do ballots when we first, right? Nominate, self-nominate. Yeah. It's just whether you object. Um, yeah. And I think we've gotten some feedback that, that sometimes that's also not a good thing because yeah. being the single objector on a thread uh, can feel pretty crappy, and so yeah. some people won't do it. Um, uh, but that said, I um, uh, I don't know if people would be. I I would probably ask here. Do, do people feel comfortable? recertifying literally we're what tyranny is talking about is that we have to vote on each person who is currently on the moderation team who has been on there for a year uh we're all timed out and we have to be recertified meaning uh we have to be like an open window of nomination where people can object to us again being moderation team members Yeah, and so the, the way I was imagining this, and I realized that it was 
how I was imagining it happening was just us going around and saying like, this person, do you object? This person, do you object? Uh, that, does, that doesn't necessarily, that might work in a private meeting, uh, public definitely not. Mm. Um, so yeah, that um, we do need to figure that out. Um, I'm also very much on borrowed time here. I have 10% battery. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, we will need to figure that process out. Um, I don't think it's urgent, like pressing urgent, uh, especially not in terms of, oh, I'm, my headphones are gonna die too. Um, <laughs> not pressing urgent in terms of, um, we have to do this right now, but it need, does need to be on our priority list of priorities soon. Uh, thank you, Tracy. That's a good, good suggestion. Um, yeah, so we're working toward that. Um, so, uh, cool. Are there any other suggestions or requests uh, that need to be done in the public session? Cool. Uh, we can drop into private then. Uh, thanks everyone for joining the live stream. Community committee members, please stay on the line. Um, otherwise, thanks for joining. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.